Welcome to the Networking with Michelle podcast, the show dedicated to providing you with life strategies with a little bit of entrepreneur advice. Here we believe in the Jim Rohn quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Hey, good people. Welcome to the Networking with Michelle show. I'm your host, Michelle Gomez, where we discuss life strategies with a bit of entrepreneur advice. And here we are for round two of our Q&A. In this episode, I'm focusing on your business, marketing, and branding questions, and we got a, quite a few of them, so I'm going to be running through this as quickly as possible. If you missed last week, go ahead and check that out, Q&A Part 1, where I talked about coaching and pricing strategies, and then next week, we're going to jump, jump into the content marketing. Um, if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram, Michelle Gomez, last name is N-G-O-M-E, and download your free guide, Seven Steps to Creating an Influential Personal Brand. Seven Steps to Creating an Influential Personal Brand by going to michellegomay.com backslash noise dash guide. And of course, these links are in the show notes. So look, I'm excited um, to get through these questions. It's a lot. So let's just jump right into them. Question number one, best steps after deciding to start your own business best steps after deciding to start your own business there's so many things to do I can't say what order to do them in um, you know this the work is just beginning you know when you decide to start your business congratulations but the real work is about to show I would say regardless if you're doing a traditional or online business you want to get those processes in place and this is going to take a while, right? So you probably want to you want to get some things down on paper, start getting clients, start selling products, and tweak it as you go. So you're going to fumble through this for a while, but after a handful of clients, a couple of months, you'll lock in, in those processes. And the reason why you want to start those processes is because eventually you're going to hand off certain tasks within your business to an assistant to a bookkeeper, to a graphic designer or somebody, you're going to hand off these responsibilities. And when it comes time to training, you already want to have that information on file, right? It's kind of, think about it as your operations manual, your training book, right? And you just want to be able to go to that document, pull it up, like, hey, here it is, print it out for them. Um, save it to the Dropbox and you're good to go. I don't think um, we spend enough emphasis on the importance of creating processes for your business because you as you grow you want to hand off those responsibilities as you continue to make those executive decisions um, another thing if you're doing a service-based business um, you're really selling your time right so if you come in starting $65 an hour for consultation after you get five clients push it to 75 Push it to $95 an hour. Set benchmarks for yourself in order for you to raise your price. And as long as you're not getting pushback from clients, you know you're you're positioning yourself in a very good place within your industry. Um, also, uh, what we call if you're a product-based business, we have what we call an MVP, your minimum viable minimum viable product. Start creating that product. Whether it's a book, it's an app, or a course, start creating that product to get the ball rolling, okay? This is something that is in your wheelhouse. You probably don't need to spend too much time on it, you know, 20, 30 hours on creating it, maybe even the research, putting it up, short, sweet, put it up, see um, see what people want, see how it feels, see how it sells, and go from there, and you could tweak it. As time goes on and lots of times that minimal viable product is going to be created by your current clients that you're consulting with okay so those will be some of my baby steps when it comes to creating your business um, one getting your processes in order two, selling your time especially if you're a service-based business and then three creating your MVP uh, whether your service or a product-based business question number two how do you go from employee slash group slash team mentality to entrepreneurial mindset? You have to hang out with entrepreneurs. You have to hang out with entrepreneurs. You have to slowly um, transition yourself into that environment through networking events, through conferences, 
through material, uh, which can be YouTube videos. I actually, I listen to a lot of T.D. Jakes. I love where he's at because I remember being, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, sitting in front of the TV, listening to T.D. Jakes when he was preaching in Virginia. And now he's a savvy businessman. And look, here I am trying to run, create some type of business, right? So when I listen to him, I get best of both worlds where he has the Christian principles behind um, leadership, behind business. Um, A leader is managing a team. So don't underestimate, don't neglect that team mentality because you still need that as a leader. But at the same time, you have to surround yourself um, with those type of people and that information. So instead of doing, um, I don't want to discredit, um, but say for example, you know, if you're a member of the black MBA, right, where it's a professional corporate professional organization, you know, maybe you need to spend more time with the greater Houston black chamber of commerce right um because it's a different mindset that the the needs are different for amongst the people therefore they're addressing different topics so you want to find ways that once again you transition mentally as well as physically by being surrounded with the right people and listening to the right things number three how important is it to calendar ev- even day-to-day events um, i think it depends on you and your memory Um, I do a lot of things in my Google Calendar as far as events. And then I also have the AnyDo app where I pay $3 a month and I've created different categories for my to-do list, right? And lots of times I put my errands in that AnyDo app and I put an alarm. Uh, Some things uh, you put in Google Keep, um, which uh, three different apps that I use depending on my needs. Uh, But if you're one of those people that you know, you forget or you're not even forget that you're just extremely busy, put it in your calendar. And I'm one of those people I get, I see so many events. I'm like, okay, I saw you this fire, that fire. There's a lot, I know there's a lot of events going on. I just don't know what I'm going to that day. So as soon as I confirm something, I put it in my phone and I say this, if it's not in my phone, it doesn't exist. If it's not on my phone, it doesn't exist because I will forget or I'm just overwhelmed with invitations that are coming across via social media or my email that I don't even know how to make a decision. Okay, so I think it's, it depends on you and also put put the business and put the personal in, in your phone, in your calendar. And if it overlaps, it overlaps. You make a decision when the time comes. All right. Number four. Best methods to track time and progress. I wish this was something I was better at. Um, I don't feel like I'm the most efficient. I'm not the best when it comes to time management. And I'd be having a lot of to think, uh, a lot of things to do. Um, there is this thing they call, let me see if I can say this right. The Pomodoro method. The Pomodoro technique is where you work in 25 minute intervals and then you take a five minute break. I've heard a lot of good things about that. Um, I think it just depends on you and how, once again, how you work. This is really understanding how you work. I'm one of those people that I tend to, to procrastinate. And then I, if I lock in, I can lock in for two hours and not get out. Right. And that's without moving. And that's probably not good. Okay. But um, everyone's different. Um, Maybe you need to turn your phone off. Put your phone on airplane mode. No Facebook, no YouTube videos, no nothing. You just lock in and do your work. Um, But if you need, I'm one of those people that if I am sitting down, like I have um, this foot roller under my computer desk. I also have my weights. Um, So I'm lifting weights in between or when I do take breaks. Because now I got to admit, um, especially in the beginning of starting this business, I've already like I've always known I'm that person because of school. Right. I'll just study. I'll just sit down and knock everything out and I won't move and because of that. I'm eating. I'm gaining weight. So I've tried to do little things or have little things in my house that, OK, if I do take that break, you know, I'm trying to get a little bit more movement 
in my system and not just going to the refrigerator or the pantry, okay? So also keep that in mind. And it just it sharpens your brain as well, you know, getting that uh, that blood flowing uh, and not just, well, okay, I'm going to take a break and, you know, you get something to nibble on, food, use the bathroom, but okay, let me do some push-ups, let me do some sit-ups and still keep my brain sharp in the process. Okay. Um, also, I haven't used this, but there's different... Um, Google Chrome extensions that you can put on your on your on your computer that will block, you know, different websites. That that way, if you do get sidetracked and you try to go to Facebook.com, it'll block it. Or if you you went to the site so many times, or if you used your allot allocated hours, you can no longer visit that website. I haven't used them, um, but I've heard about them, so that might be something else to look into. All right, number five, expect, let's see, how to combat the unexpected feelings of isolation and the struggle some have to network. Hmm. How to combat the unexpected feelings of isolation and the struggle some have to network. Yeah, so I'm all about playing to your strengths um, in anything. Uh, there's a lot of people that say they're introverts and therefore they don't want to network, but I feel like you have to find... Uh, what works for you and uh, my message on networking has evolved lately because I don't pitch about oh you need to go to the event and you need to go to X amount conferences every year I don't pitch that anymore but I do I do stay you need to network where you are so what do I mean by that um, if you go to Burger King and <laughs> and I'm laughing, but this really happened to me. You know, if you go to Burger King and someone looks somewhat, I don't even want to say presentable. If you just feel the urge to say hi, say hi, like greet the person. Because that's how a conversation starts. It starts by saying hi. And maybe Burger King is not the right example, but Starbucks. A lot of us go to Starbucks on a regular basis. And Starbucks has working people, creatives, professionals. And if you sit down, maybe start that conversation and during your break, hey, what are you working on right now? You know, or just hand them my card. This is what I do, X, Y, Z. Um, if you, you know, ever need my help or know someone that does, please pass this along. It's really simple. It's really simple. And I know like, oh, I show you an extrovert. Da, da, da. Um, look, I just got off the couch watching YouTube for a couple of years before, a couple of years, for a couple of hours before I recorded this podcast. I wanted to stay to myself, you know, someone wanted to invite me out. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to stay at home. Right. So you got to find that balance. Um, but every conversation, every relationship starts with hi. So why not be the first to say it? Okay. Um, as far as the isolation, once again, you just have to find balance. Um, I do believe mental health mindset is very, very important. Um, I like to be alone. I really do like to be alone. But at the same time, I think I do find that balance um, when I do go out. Also, you know, don't think about you have to meet X amount of people anytime you do go to an event. Maybe you just need that one one good quality conversation, exchange of business cards, and you're good. All right. And maybe that's enough. Um, at the same time, don't be afraid to go outside, go to the bathroom, take a break, get a breather in. Uh, regroup and then go back out to the event. I've done that plenty of times. Nothing's wrong with that. Okay. So alleviate, remove that pressure of networking. Take that off your back. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You can meet people anywhere. Okay. Just be your best self, whether you're at Starbucks or you're at a business event. Stress with high and why not be the first one to say it? All right, number six, uh, most or least effective local internet networking events. Um, I'm all about associations. If you can find a professional association, um, go to their website, see when their events are, um, associations within your within your industry. Um, right now, as far as online, I'll say, you know, definitely tap into Facebook groups. Um, once again, type in the industry or certain names and keywords within your industry and see what Facebook groups pop up. Um, you can also do a keyword search in LinkedIn, hashtag search in Instagram and Twitter 
and really just see what people are talking about um, on the different social media platforms and follow those people online. Don't be afraid to send them a direct message. Um, hey, I appreciate your work or, you know, thanks for following me. I've been following your work for some time or I heard this interview and this podcast here and there. I read this article. Uh, don't be afraid to initiate contact, especially if it's online. I mean, you know, if they, I don't, I don't even want to say people are going to ignore you. Lots of times I see the message, but I'm in route. Like I'm literally driving, I'm in traffic and I see the message, but I'm unable to respond. Right. Which is a lot different versus going to an event and you say hi and then they turn around and walk away and they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that to you. Okay. Um, so I can't say what's the most effective or most or the least effective because it's all about industry. And every organization varies, every event varies. Um, some people have 10 networking events, and that may be, I mean, excuse me, 10 people show up to their event, and that may be some of the best quality field networking you can do versus going to um, an event that has 70 people and you see nothing but clicks spread out throughout the room. You know, it once again it's all about presentation and being bold and being confident and playing to your strengths and making the most out of every opportunity every room that you step into number seven networking that doesn't <laughs> networking that doesn't add to net worth and how to recognize the difference Ooh. <clears throat> that's a good one uh, networking that doesn't add to the net worth and how to recognize the difference I think you that comes with time, right? That comes with time because you got to be careful on you have experience, you have a professional experience, and then you're a new entrepreneur. So it's like you're a baby again, right? So life is all about transitions. And then you're in business for two years. And that transition from year two to year three, year three to year five, year five to year seven, Ooh, it's tough. All of us are transition. So you got to be careful when uh, you're talking about leveling up because anytime you level up, you got to hold your own weight. Mm. All right. So anytime you level up, you got to hold your own weight. Um, but you got to weed through the bullshit. All right. It is what it is. But I think it takes time. I think it takes time. Um, I do believe some of the best networking events are usually in the morning. Those are going to be your early morning brunches. Uh, those are going to be your luncheons. And for some of those, you have to pay. All right. So as I stated in my book, Network, Navigate and Nurture, you got to create a budget. You got to create a networking budget for that. Um, some of the good networking may be at a gala, right? Those are in the evening. That can be anywhere from 100 to $200 a ticket just to show up. And then, of course, you got to get all dolled up, right? So I definitely think some of the events um, that you pay for, um, you put a little bit of skin in the game, right? So it's going to be worth it. It's a different type of people, quality people in the room. Uh, some of the events that are in the evening, Thursday evening, leading into the weekend, that's free. And it's more happy hour-ish, happy hour-ish that might not be the group for you, right? But it takes time and a thing, and it's conversation, right? So you just gotta weed through, weed through, weed through, keep talking to people, keep talking to people, and there's gonna be that one person you click with, and then you're able to develop a relationship with them, right? Number eight, Partnering with others, how to determine if a partnership will be mutually beneficial and when to seek a partnership. Um, strategic collaborations are very important for growth. I think you need to write down what are the things that you need and that you're looking for. Once again, short and long term goals. Right. At the same time, you need to ask yourself, what are the what do you add? What are the resources that you have and that you're going to bring to the table? OK, I think partnership, once again, it comes over time. Um, in the sense that you either need to interview people, you know, I'm looking for this, 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 hey, I met you at this event, 
I enjoyed our conversation. I would like to talk to you further about some things that I'm working on. Okay. Also, you got to research people, man. This is why people have a track record. And I say this in my seven steps to creating an influential personal brand. Um, I talk about number six is credibility and number seven is show me the money. And between those two things, what happens in the six and seven is your track record, right? Your, tr- your, your, your credibility, getting the PR interviews and the media attention, that's the credibility. And your credibility actually allows you to charge, right? Allows you to partner, in this case, partner with people. Because when you Google, when I Google you, what am I going to? What am I going to see? What am I going to find? Or if I start asking around, like, hey, have you heard of da-da-da-da? Have you heard of da-da-da-da? Have you heard about this person? Can people vouch for you? You know? So, you know, we think this online landscape is so big and broad. But let me tell you something. Once you get in the circle, your world shrinks. You are not invincible. You are not invincible, (laughs) whether it's here in Houston or if you're online. Once you jump into the circle of entrepreneurship or whatever your industry is, that that world that you think is also big shrinks. So take your time when it comes to partnership. Um, Ask like what are the write down the questions you need to ask someone. You know, it's the interview process. Research them. Test their character. Not let me back up. Check on their character. Okay, not test, but check on their character. And I did a great interview with Larry Books. I'm gonna he um has a successful real estate company, which is a partnership, and we talk about that. So I'll definitely have that episode in the show notes. Number nine, most impactful local groups for business growth. Um, I would definitely say start with your local chamber of commerce. Um, start with SBA and just um, nonprofit organizations or associations that provide free resources to give you, you know, resources as far as documents, templates, links. Um, SBA has free coaching. You have WBEA, which is the Women Business Enterprise or something like that. Um, so start there. Uh, they can help you start your business, right? And then they should have some veterans there that will also allow you to, um, they can help you scale your business, right? And I believe in the last episode, I stated if you're starting a business, I don't think you should pay for coaching. I don't think you should pay for coaching until you get your footing, right? Until you get a solid foundation, some consistency, cannot talk, some consistency, consistent revenue, and then um, start hiring a coach to actually grow your business okay so uh, start with your chamber of commerce commerce if it's local once again find some facebook groups some linkedin contacts and go from there number 10 setting realistic expectations and charting progress yeah i think you just have to create benchmarks whether it's annual benchmarks and then break that down to quarterly to monthly um, only you know what those KPI or KPIs are. Um, it could be something as simple, you know, I'm a marketing person, so it can be as simple as getting 50 followers a month. And that's pretty hard to do, y'all. That's pretty hard to do. Um, so that could be a marketing metric. Or if you're going to run this Facebook ad, you're going to spend $100 a month on Facebook ads, and you're going to break that down to, you know, $10 for 10 ads or whatever, for X amount of days, you know, what kind of visibility do you want to get from that? And how many leads, how much traffic do you want to go to your website? How many leads do you want from that? Which when you get the phone calls and the email, hey, did you see my Facebook ad or how did you get here? So just be reasonable um, when it comes to your revenue goals. I always believe you have to reverse engineer it. Um, What's your annual goals, annual metrics, revenue or non-revenue? and then work backwards okay and progress is still progress um i've known i know i've been in a funny spot where 
I've been making a lot of progress. I've been making a lot of great strides in my business, but I haven't hit my revenue goals. And that's a hard pill to swallow, right? Um, I just haven't decided to stop. So here I am. All right. Let's see. Uh, time stillers. This is a good question. Setting the time limits. Uh, for things that do not directly impact business growth during peak hours when phone calls can be made, for example. Yeah, so I used to have this rule, I may need to go back to it, where I only have accepted one personal phone call a day, right? And so if I had one of my friends that called me at 9 o'clock in the morning, I wasn't answering the phone for the rest of the day, unless it was for my mom or my brother. I might need to go back to that rule. Um, yeah, because people... Ooh, people will steal your time away. And this happened to me recently. I was at Chick-fil-A. Um, of course, I had lunch and I was working. I used their Wi-Fi in between my classes that I teach. And I had a call come through. I haven't spoken to my friend. We speak. I've known her for 18 years and we probably speak like once a year. And she called. I answered it. And we were on the phone for an hour. And I was just like, man, like uh, I really need to do some work but I don't talk to her often and it was tough, right? It was really tough, but I accepted the call and it is what it is. Um, so I think you just need to create some boundaries within yourself. Um, now I'm addicted to my phone. I'm addicted to my email. I'm always checking my email, but maybe you only check your email, you know, two to three times a day at a specific time frame. Um, you know, figure out what works for you. And then you have a daily, maybe you have a morning routine and a daily schedule, and that will provide some structure to your day. That way you're able to maximize your time. All right, number 12, working at the business versus working on the business. All right, so this kind of um, overlaps the previous question. I would recommend a book on the E-Myth Theory, the E-Myth Theory by Michael Gerber. And there's a couple of different versions of that book, but <clears throat> when it comes to, um, once again, it depends on your business. So there's times when, like, okay, do, do I need to work on my website right now? Like, oh, I need to update my website. Okay. Now, sometimes we can go in and be like, oh, okay, it's only going to take five minutes. I just need to tweak this. And if for whatever reason, you get lost in time. And next thing you know, you spend 45 minutes on your website first thing in the morning. What happened? Okay. Um, pretty much you're, you're denying yourself. You're procrastinating on something you know that's more important that you don't want to focus on. And maybe that's cold calls. Okay. So... You need to work on money generating activities, right? Especially if it's first thing in the morning or going back to business hours that was mentioned in the previous question. So maybe between 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., you're working on money generating activities. So what is that? That's sending out the emails. That's making the phone calls. That's making the visits or the meetings to people because, you know, Everyone's up first thing in the morning, Central Standard Time. I'm here in Houston, Texas, uh, and I hate, call I hate calling California. It's such an inconvenience. But you're just able to get a lot of stuff done because everyone's pretty much working at the same time, and they're trying to get as much done before lunch, right? So focus on those money revenue generating activities first thing in the morning, and then things that you can kind of fall by the wayside do those in the late afternoon okay and once again you may have a, a different schedule every day like maybe like for me uh, one thing I would do is I would send out a bunch of emails like 10 emails on Monday morning and then on Tuesday I would do the follow-up calls right like, hey I sent an email yesterday about a speaking engagement XYZ okay so create, once again, it goes back to setting those processes, right? Not just step one, step two, step three, but this activity will be done on Monday. This activity will be done on Tuesday. Was, and even going as far as putting specific times or time frames that these activities need to be done. All right. 
Number 13, the importance of seminars, webinars, conferences, and books. Look, I'm an advocate of professional development from from the free ebook to the thousand dollar conference okay i want to say the ten thousand dollars conference i'm just not there yet but those events do exist because i hear about them all the time and i'm like my time is coming all right you have to develop yourself you have to develop yourself um you know what is your learning style what is the best way you learn and even even oh my god last week so i bought jennifer lewis's book uh the mother of black hollywood and i was like okay michelle tired of listening to music I'm tired of listening to podcasts <clears throat> I was like let me go back to my audiobooks and everyone knows I love business books but I listened to her this woman had me laughing and crying within the first hour and it's what I needed at that time and she's still dropping nuggets things that are I'm taking away with like man that's just so valuable because she has wisdom you know so I'm all about making the most of information and applying it um so you do need a break when it comes to certain things i learn best by audio listening and driving right i'm at peace so that's a win for me um webinars be careful um there's a couple of things with the webinars um when you're when you're listening to webinars you want to understand am i listening to this webinar because i need the information or I'm listening to this webinar because I need to apply this information to my webinar in the future, okay? So lots of times you have to study things twice or multiple times for different forms. And I learned this I learned this years ago when I was a teenager when it came to reading the Bible, but I'll get into that later. So when you are learning, why am I learning this? Is it because I need the information or because I, well, of course you need the information, but am I needing this information because I want to offer it to my clients as well? And you're trying to find ways that person A is doing and, but how are you going to formulate it for yourself as person B? Okay. So be mindful of that. Um, I think conferences are really important. Conferences and seminars, uh, just because you get to meet people. You know, uh, for me, human touch is really, really important, um, especially if you're able to connect people, connect with people online. Talked about this last week with the group coaching. If you get a coach that offers a group coaching and they have an event and this is the chance to meet your peers, go for it. You know, try to make it out to that conference and put um, a face to the name that you've been um you know, corresponding with online. One of my best business buddies, shout out to Shamika, um, 2014, I believe, 2014, no, 2015, we met, all right? So it was on Facebook. I did an interview, um, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. I did a podcast interview, one of my early podcast interviews. She had listened to it. Um, it's on a Facebook page, I think a group page or something. Anyways, I posted something on there. She recognized my name. Hey, I heard your podcast. I bought your book. Da, 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 da. Next thing I know, we're going to the same conference in a couple of months. We met at the conference after the conference. We're still chatting. We joined a mastermind together. And then we always, we're always chatting on Facebook Messenger. And then we do like quarterly phone calls. One of my best business buddies, right? And it all started from a Facebook post or a podcast interview, right? But if you have that chance to meet people in person, do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Wow, we're okay. So, whew, Lord, I'm going to keep going. Keep going. Okay. Uh, marketing questions. What is the most, what is the best platform to begin marketing goods and services associated with your brand and how to determine that? Look, I'm going to say social media. Now, which platform? It depends on your audience. Now, I still do very well with LinkedIn. There was a time when I didn't, but I still do very well with LinkedIn, right? So if you're dealing with corporate professionals, go with LinkedIn. If you can figure out what your audience is on Facebook through Facebook ads, do it on Facebook. Now, this is where people get stuck, though. 
people will say, oh, my fa- my audience is it's not on Facebook. Everyone's on Facebook. Your audience is on Facebook. The problem is you don't know what your people do. You don't know what your audience does. Because this is why I like LinkedIn. When you're on LinkedIn, it's your professional resume. If you don't know anything, you know their name, you know their job, and their title. If they're an active LinkedIn user. If they're on Facebook, you just know their name. Maybe the city they're from, the city that they live at. <laughs> And, and, and they're cool people because we got 30 mutual friends and I ain't never met you a day in life, but I saw you at brunch. <laughs> All right. So look, it depends on your product. It depends on your service, but I guarantee you your people are on Facebook, but your the best way to target them is through ads. And the same thing applies for Instagram because it's the same company. Okay. Um, but if you sell t-shirts, maybe you need a Teespring, maybe you need Shopify, um, if you're selling gym equipment, maybe it's Amazon, right? And Amazon, you can do ads on Amazon, right? So you never know how people are going to come across you, come across your information. So I think you should be on every platform as, as much as possible, you know, um, don't stretch yourself too thin, but I think it's best if you're on every platform. Okay. Um, number two, how does a new author or entrepreneur begin a marketing campaign with limited, no, no funding or sponsorship? Oh, this, you know, I do this all the time. This is in my wheelhouse. When it comes to a marketing campaign with no fun. So this, this is tricky part. Cause I think, I think marketing has gone down because social media, people see social media as a free platform and that they're charging with advertising. Uh, people are still struggling with it. You have to, you're going to pay money somehow. Once again, time versus money. That's my philosophy in life. Simple concept. Um, I want to say visual branding. I'm not a graphic designer. I paid my designer to create all of the visual stuff you see on my website, right? Or most of it anyways. Um, or you can figure out Canva and see what works for you because you still have to have some beauty in your brand, some visual impact in your brand to have a successful marketing campaign if you're going to leverage these social media platforms. Okay. Um, you got to have an email list. Blast out those emails, you know, um, promoting your stuff, pushing your stuff, making that awareness. Um, so once again, go back to maybe depending on the t- different type of partnership and collaborations you can leverage where maybe it's not about money, but it's about leveraging resources, right? Um, so that, that can be another thing when it comes to a successful marketing campaign. Maybe the resource is their email list. Uh, maybe the resource is you being able to speak in front of their audience or you doing a webinar for their audience. Okay. So those are things that you can leverage with little to no funding. All right. Number three, what platforms I feel like y'all are getting one big consultation from me. All right. All right. Number three, what platforms are most effective when seeking to increase viewership? Uh, Facebook, Facebook, hands down, uh, Facebook, Instagram, f- especially if you can do video, do it. Even LinkedIn, LinkedIn's getting really good on video. The thing is you have to make your post public. You have to make your post public. A lot of people don't make their post public. It's just tied to family and friends. And we all know they ain't buying from you anytime soon. All right. So what platforms are most effective in seeking to increase viewership, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, do a video, make it public. Number four, what are some of the early pitfalls or mistakes that are commonly made or advice that you've heard that should be taken with a grain of salt? Um, and then in parentheses, doesn't have typical results, may add miles to the journey, offer situational success. Uh, what are some of the early pitfalls or mistakes that are commonly made or advice that you've heard? I think the most important thing you can do when it comes to starting a business, well, this is about marketing, Well, I want to say this because it's important is, um, the fact that you got to get your finances in order, get your financials, get your books in orders from the very, very beginning. Okay. Uh, when it comes to marketing, 
um, you still have to have a plan, you know, have um, a marketing plan. And I'm, I've actually been slipping on this and we're March right now. I need to do a personal branding plan, right? I need to do a personal branding plan for 2018 because it's kind of, and it's really about um, what, what are the type of audiences I need to target? And for me, a partnership at this, I'm really like right now, I'm really going hard on PR. Like PR is really, really important to me right now. So I'm always looking for interviews. So those are the type of partnerships I'm looking for right now. And uh, something else, but I'm, my mind is drawing a blank. But um, my mind is drawing a blank. But yeah, it's really about having a plan, um, creating a plan, a marketing plan. A lot of people don't do that. They just feel like they're going to uh, post on social media. They're going to throw the spaghetti at the wall and they're going to see what sticks. Mm. Good luck with that. Okay. Uh, what else? So even with the social media, try to put some money behind it. Uh, try to put a strategy behind it. Um, try to hire me behind it. No, <laughs> no, but, um, you know, get, get professional help. And um, I was talking to a gentleman the other day and he was saying when it comes to marketing, you just feel like you're throwing your dollars in a black hole. And I get it because it takes a long time to get the traction that you want to see in your business from marketing right and, and marketing is so broad right now it could be video it could be social media um content um it could be so many things right now advertising social media advertising right um but you have to i guess this can go back to what kind of um uh, metrics you need to put in place in your business you have to figure out how much runway can i give myself that okay if i'm going to pay five hundred dollars a month for marketing and you can break that down however you want to like how long is this five hundred dollars sustainable like do i have three months i can go i can pay fifteen hundred dollars over three months and i can be okay if i was to lose my money it hurts it sucks but i'll be okay until i see an roi or i just need to stop right so this is the thing if you spend five hundred dollars a month on marketing and you get one client i'll just say a thousand dollar package or whatever it is okay you know i'm a service-based business that pays for itself you know you're profitable um you're at a hundred percent, right? So you spend five hundred dollars a month on marketing. You get one client. Boom! It pays for itself. Of course, you have other expenses and stuff, but it pays for itself. So that's one less thing to worry about. Okay. Now, if you're selling T-shirts, that may be a different story. You gotta sell a lot of T-shirts, right? But it is possible. So I think it's just kind of figuring out what are those benchmark, having a plan, and figuring out what are those benchmarks along the way. All right, so I'm going to keep going. Look, we're at the 43-minute mark. I'm going to keep going. Uh, branding questions. Uh, what is the best way to begin branding your business? All right, so a couple of things here. When it comes to branding, um, I kind of feel like this question is stated as far as logos and graphic design, which is very true. But when it comes to branding, our personal brand is really your reputation. So people know you for one thing, are you going to create your business from the thing that you're known from? Okay. And then I talked about visual branding, having that visual presence, because online we want to see pretty pictures and video. So um, there's Canva. Look, I'm not a designer. That's not in my wheelhouse, but there's Canva. There's a couple of other free things and apps that you can download and get creative. Um, I've hired a designer of me personally and what I love about, and not just, 
shout out to all the designers I work with studio 1816 designs BID creative and um, e fabulous all of them are great right because even though I've worked with different designers I have a uniform brand color and that's green green and white all right so however you decide a brand designer wise make sure that things are uniformed along the way because you don't want even though you're just starting you don't want to have brand confusion number two is it best to establish the connection between your name and your brand from the beginning absolutely absolutely so one thing with me i I have a company. A lot of people don't know I have a company, but I have a full-fledged business uh, with the LLC and tax ID numbers and all kinds of stuff, right? And that business is called Line 25 Consulting. But my personal brand exceeds my company brand name. And that bothered me in the beginning and I would argue people up and down until I got tired. The thing is, at the end of the day, I know you're doing business with me. You have a relationship with me. You're trusting me. And whether I close Line 25 Consulting and I go work for Accenture or I start a new company called Michelle Gomez International, more than likely you're going to follow me because of the relationship, right? So, yes, establish that connection from the beginning. And don't get caught up with company names. Have a company, have everything formalized and legit, but don't get caught up in that stuff because it really, I just feel like it doesn't matter, okay? But that's my opinion and everyone varies. Number C, ah, see, I'm tired. I'm tired, y'all. All right, number three. Uh, what is, if so, what is the best and most effective way to do that? Um, I think it's all about your pitch, you know, telling people what you do, you know, having that elevator pitch, having your core message. Um, Hi, my name is Michelle Gomez. I help small businesses create content and social media marketing strategies to showcase their expertise. You know, um, having when you walk in the room, people eventually, as time goes on, going to those networking events, being active in those Facebook groups, people are going to know what you do because of your pitch. And there's consistency with your message. You're not talking about um, content marketing and social media strategies. And then, you know, I go to your website and you're selling relationship advice. And it's like, what? What? Wait, I thought you were the marketing girl. Don't get me wrong. Nothing's wrong with that. You just have to take people on that journey. Oh, and it's coming. All right. Number four. What are some common mistakes new entrepreneurs make when beginning to brand their name or their business. Um, not saying what you do, not sharing what you do. And I think I'm guilty of this. Um, and it's kind of, uh, kind of a catch 22. So the problem I've had is when I was in the financial industry and people asked me what I did and I said what I did, people say, Oh, you make money or, Oh, you make a lot of money. And I guess that was the assumption with me working in the financial industry. And I got tired of that. So I stopped telling people what I did. I just stopped. And I was like, oh, Michelle, I like to have fun or whatever I said. Now as an entrepreneur, I need to scream that from the mountaintop all the time. And I don't. Okay. Um, the good thing is I have a lot of people introduce me and they brag about me. So that's cool. Um, other times I don't say much about myself and people are like, oh, you're being modest. You're being humble. I need to stop, um, minimizing myself is something a friend told me not too long ago. And it's, I'm trying to find that balance of, you know, what I do. Um, well, I know what I do, but just sharing what I do. So I would say, one of the most common mistakes is that as a new entrepreneur, they don't brag about themselves. They don't share about themselves enough. So make sure you do that. Make sure you do that. Um, my business helps people with X, Y, Z. Okay. Or I help people get results in this area of their life. 
So share about it. Get your pitch. Get your elevator pitch together. Get your core message together. And just put it out there day in, day out. And then people have a short attention span. So they're going to forget. So you got to constantly remind people. Let's see. I think that's it. Uh, Let's see. Okay. Last question. I'm probably going to talk about this more in the next episode. But it says, book, no book. How does being a published, self-published author add value to your brand? Man, look, I can go on and on and on about this. It has worked wonders for me. Um, Self-published author, 2014, had no idea what I was doing. I'm about, I'm like, look, I'm about to put these 50 pages together and we're going to make it do what it do. Now, I have never written my books for money. I've never written my books for money. Um, I've never been one to, I've never done a good job keeping track of how many books I've sold. Um, Success Undefined was an Amazon hot seller list. Um, The week of launch, shout out to Studio 1816 for designing a hot cover. I never bragged about that, right? I never mentioned that. Um, That's not why I write books, right? I write books because I want to speak. And once I wrote Network Navigate, it allowed me the opportunity to speak. That book came out in September 2014. And that following year, I spoke at like five or six conferences. And I did like a little over a dozen um, speaking events. And I got my first corporate client that year. So for me, it's added tremendous value to my personal brand and I would encourage everyone to write a book also will I write more books absolutely um more I have more books in me there's books that I've read that oh it's like oh I don't like this it ain't it ain't coming out I don't know maybe it will 2018 2019 I don't know there's been a book I've been working on for the past five years probably gonna work on it for another five years okay I don't write books for money But I do write books to share my message, to help other people, and for me to speak. So a book, yes. If you got a book, write a book. And it will work wonders for your personal brand. Because when people, excuse me, when people read that introduction, Michelle Gomez, author of Network, Navigate, and Nurture, Michelle Gomez, two-time author of Network, Navigate, and Nurture, and Success Undefined, and podcast host of, it's very impressive. It's very impressive. And I've been blessed in that regard, that it has solidified uh, my credibility. It shows my track record. Uh, Consistency is key, right? So it works wonders for your personal brand. So write that book write that book and I'm in the process of trying to create some resources to help people to write and launch a self-published book because lately I've been getting asked that a lot and um, I want to help people in that process so whoo I don't know how many questions was that let's see that was at least 20 to 25 questions within an hour. So I'm pretty, pretty good, pretty impressed. And I need some more water. But I am so grateful for once again, having your attention. Um, continue to send your questions to me um, via email, info at michellegomay.com, Instagram. You can slide in my DMs. I ain't tripping. Um, but look, I'm looking for speaking engagements, speaking engagements. So seven steps to create an influential personal brand. If you would love to hear that spiel and you think your organization could benefit from it, I would love to talk to you. All right. So please send me an email. Please reach out to me. Um, I have a lot of good things in the work. In the works, uh, March 18th, I'm doing a LinkedIn training here in Houston, Texas. It's a private event. And on April 27th, I'll be at the Women Near Conference in New York uh, discussing content marketing going in your digital strategy and I will be there that weekend I am looking to do a meetup so trying to work out the dates Um, but be on the lookout for that if you are in New York let me know because I want to meet with you I would love to do something if you cannot make it to that conference Um, but I'm excited I've never been in New York before so I'm looking forward to that event 
and I definitely want to maximize it by meeting you. Ah, as always, grateful, grateful, grateful. Uh, remember, I believe in you, and personal connection leads to influential network. Thanks for networking with Michelle.